Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Pleasure to be with you. Your calls welcome at 866-HEY-LARS. That's 866-439-5277. Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com. Frank Gaffney joins me now, who's the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C. Frank, do I understand correctly that the U.S. and the Taliban are getting close to a deal that's going to require that America pull the rest of its forces out of Afghanistan? So we are told, Lars. I hope that it's not so, but that would seem to be the intention, certainly, of the negotiator for the U.S., uh, uh, Zalme Khalilazad, a uh, man I've known for years and uh, and admire generally. But I, I think uh, he is a man on a mission, and the mission, I regret to say, is the surrender of Afghanistan to the pa- Taliban. And I think with the Taliban will come um, a whole host of Sharia supremacists operating there and emboldened by the perception that uh, their Islamist enterprise has defeated the world's greatest power. And that will not be good for Americans overseas as well as here. All right. Now, Frank, uh, listen, I, I have concerns about that, too, but I'm wondering what the alternative is. Well, the alternative is uh, stay indefinitely. Something, something other than doing what we've been doing, which has been a pretty much unmitigated disaster. I don't think it's been good for the Afghans. It's certainly been hugely costly to us in lives as well as treasure. I think what the alternative is, Lars, is something that you might say would be modeled after what was actually a winning approach in Vietnam before Henry Kissinger did something akin to what Zalme Khalilzad is doing right now, which is surrendering Vietnam to uh, the North. And that is a, a program that was called CORDS. It was a civil uh, based operation to protect um, villages and small communities with the native, you know, personnel rather than our own. It, it was called Vietnamization, as you may remember at the time. I do. Um, it has to be accompanied, I think, with some continuing capability on the part of the United States. And an old friend of mine by the name of Eric Prince, once of Blackwater fame, uh, former Navy SEAL has proposed uh, that involves using not so much American military personnel, though there would be some small contingent of special forces and intelligence people, but basically veterans uh, serving under contract to go back in and perform some of the functions that our personnel are doing, particularly air support, uh, in close um coordination with, and in fact, joint operations with the Afghan military itself. It, it isn't necessarily a panacea. Uh, in the end, it may not work, but I think we could have a dramatically smaller footprint than we do today, 13,000 people in uniform, something like 37,000 contractors on the ground right now. Um, Eric thinks maybe 6,000 or so of those contractors and uh, a fraction of the number of military personnel. So it's it's a, an, an alternative that I hope the president will contemplate together with this sort of cords style effort on the ground with the Afghans themselves to secure the place as best one can against, um, yes, the Taliban, but also the Islamic State and al Qaeda, all of which are there now. But would would a 6,000 force be sufficient to actually make a difference and keep the place from becoming a terrorist haven again? Or would it only act as sort of an alarm bell that when we hear from them, thing, you know, that, that other forces have moved in, they'll give us at least some advance warning of what's happening? Well, I think it could be the latter, but I hope it's the former, because I think if the rules of engagement are right, if the U.S. and, and perhaps other foreign personnel are working in offensive operations against the Taliban and their uh, fellow Sharia supremacists, as I call them, um, I I think you may actually be able to have the Afghans stepping up and defending their country against this threat, which I, I think the vast majority of them are not anxious to 
see return. This is the real tragedy. We will see another population abandoned to the not very tender mercies of totalitarians, in this case, uh, as I say, Sharia supremacists. But they will be ruthless, particularly to women there and anybody who had anything to do with uh, an alternative to the Taliban, an elected government, Democrats, the Northern Alliance, you name it. All of them will be in grave peril if we abandon them. And uh, I, I don't think that's either responsible or strategically sound. So we don't I mean, want to I, continue I, doing what we've been no, doing. No, I agree with that. I'm just wondering what the sensible alternative is that would actually be a game changer and, and would achieve some kind of different result than just the predicted one. You pull out all the way, it becomes a terrorist haven again, and we're back there 10 years from now. Uh, or not. Uh, and, or and, not. Uh, or not. And, and you remember, we did one Gulf War, then we had to do a second Gulf War. And, and, uh, you know, and then Obama pulled out early, and a lot of us said, you're going to be sending troops back in. And sure enough, you know, bef- before Obama left, he had to send troops right back in. So it, yeah. you know. And that's really the point, Lars. You know, we've seen this movie before. Um, and in Vietnam, when we abandoned the place, um, millions of people were murdered. And others went into concentration camps. Quite a number of them fled, some of them here and elsewhere. Um, we've seen the movie before in Iraq, as you say. Uh, President Trump was, as a candidate, properly very critical of Barack Obama for essentially just washing his hands of the place. And we wound up having to spend an awful lot more treasure going in after ISIS after it uh, essentially filled the vacuum. That will happen again. Nature and you know, geopolitics abhor vacuums, and you will see bad guys filling this one. And so, you know, again, no guarantees here, Lars, but I think one thing is certain. If we do nothing, if we surrender, there will certainly be bad outcomes. If we adopt this strategy of turning it over to the Afghans but helping them do the things they can't do themselves— not with a big army footprint, not with the massive contractor base and all the rest of it, but in a discrete, you know, it's kind of the special forces model combined with this proven cords approach in Vietnam to help empower and arm and train the people who will be defending their own villages against these jihadis. And that, I think, has a chance of succeeding, and I certainly think it ought to be tried. I hope you're right about that. Frank, thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it.